Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is not Laura Johnson. Uh, Laura is out today, so I'm filling in. My name is Lisa Lashendro. I'm one of the annuity marketers here at IMES, and it's a pleasure to be with you here today with Miss Carrie Freeberg. Uh, she's going to be talking a little bit about the Teton um, and taking a deeper dive into that product. It's a pleasure having Carrie with us. She's the director of product development. Um, she's one of the she's one of the folks that designed the product, so she's actually an actuary. So uh, it is a pleasure to have you here with us, Carrie. Appreciate it. Thank you. Excited to be here this morning. Well, with that, I'm just going to start out. Uh, we have a lot of folks that are already contracted with IMS here on the webinar this morning, but for those of you that are not, I'm going to give you a little. Uh, 10,000 foot view of what IMS is all about and some of the perks that there are here uh, being contracted with us and working with the IMS family. Get started here. Oops, my computer here. Oh, there we go. So once you get contracted with IMS, um, we do have our new producer builders or bonuses that um, you have in the first 180 days working with us. It goes on several different levels. We've got the base level of 100,000. You can see that we definitely want to partner with you and, and help you build your, your business. So we like to give back as much as we can to help uh, keep those marketing dollars in your pocket too. So we've got the 100,000 uh, level here, the 250. 500, 750, and then a million. If there's anything on here that you feel like would be a little bit more helpful for you, I know that uh, the boss Steve is uh, very open to other ideas. So uh, definitely let us know if there's something else that would benefit you more than that, what is listed here. We also have our uh, marketing reimbursement program where we're going to give you a little money back towards marketing of your choice uh, with all the premium dollars that you write with us, along with our referral producer program. Your business is based on referrals and so is ours. So um, we wanna make sure that we're rewarding you for that and um, keep everybody happy. Our back office support, we really do like to partner with you folks. And we pride ourselves with our service. Anywhere from, you know, turning in the application, getting illustrations, the whole bit and caboodle, we are going to be there to service you. We do uh, consider ourselves the Cadillac service, is what I like to call it. So if the proof is in the pudding, once you start working with us, you'll definitely see um, see how, how satisfied you'd be with, with IMS. Going, excuse me. Um, anywhere from you know us walking you through a paperless contracting, coaching you on the illustrations, um, training, anything you need, we will be there to assist you. Next, of course, we have our website. Um, on the website, you can really have everything at the tip of your fingers. Anywhere from quoting term uh, quotes. Uh, sales ideas, forms. Um, um, we'll get into Firelight as well. So this is one of the top um, technology e-app services in the industry. And we've got most of our um, most of our carriers that are set up on there. I do believe American General is also on there right now. Um, a lot of those are probably coming on here very shortly, but um, in the times that we're at right now, uh, e-apps e are definitely becoming a little bit more on the high priority end. So we're happy to walk you through those and uh, help you get through that as well. Next, we have our creative marketing solutions. Our creative team is just awesome. Um, they are in-house, so we're not we're not working with another company on that. 
we can do anything from turnkey solutions to uh, you know recommendations consulting obviously social media consulting has been a big topic here lately we we've, we've got guides with that we've got um anything from you know the very base of creating a logo for you or your agency to um creating facebook pages or advertising whatever it is you need we can definitely help you with those solutions as well Next couple of years, about three years ago, I guess almost, um, Stephen Charles had decided that we needed to have a wealth management division here. The nice thing about this is that if you are interested in getting um, licensed and um, your Series 65 or whatnot, you can give us a call and we can help you with that. Or if you're not interested in dealing with a uh, getting uh, licensed or registered um, you can you know utilize this our the, these guys Mike and Joan and those folks are happy to help you with that business um, so that you don't have to worry about somebody else going into your backyard and snagging up your clients we'll take care of that and um, then you can have a little bit more control there as well Next, we have our two-day training, our Life and Annuity Academy. Um, we used to do this just once a year, I believe, but it was such a high demand for it. We do now do it several times a year. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic here, we did have to cancel the one we had scheduled here in May, but uh, have every intention to get those going again, and hopefully the end of the summer, beginning of fall. But basically, it's all expense paid by us here at IMS. We partner with one of our lead carriers usually. Um, Two-day training, all expense paid, like I said, anywhere from the travel to the, from the airport to room and board to dinners, meals, the whole bit. Best part is you get to rub elbows with other folks in the industry that's walking the walk and talking the talk just like you and um, kind of see what's working, what's not working, and come out of there uh, with some fresh new ideas. So we're excited to get that rolling again. Lastly, we have trips too. Um, right now, the next trip is hopefully <laughs> gonna be at the Montage and Las Cabos. Um, this will be August 26th to the 29th. The deadline on this one is June 30th, but good news is we've got another one coming up, that's the IMS Marketing Summit. This is one that's completely sponsored by just us here at IMS. Uh, qualification requirements is 3.5 million. Um, the dates would be March 7th through the 11th in 2021. The qualification period, you still got some time for this. This is throughout the rest of this year, December 31st, 2020. Now, if you feel really ambitious, We've got the next step, um, basically just an extension to the previous slide. But for those that go um, above that, we've got minimal, minimum qualification requirements is 6.5. Instant qualification would be 8.5. That's any life or annuity business that you write with IMS. This will be an extension, like I said, to the previous slide, that trip. Um, it's just going to extend to March 11th through the 14th and going to another island. Um, that's, I believe, the four seasons. So definitely uh, not too shabby. We like to spoil our agents wherever we can and reward you for your hard work. Next, I'm going to bring it, uh, hand it over to Carrie Freeberg. And um, if I could ask everybody to kind of jot down their questions, I will be following up with everybody individually after the seminar, either today or on Monday. And um, if you could jot down your questions, I'd be happy to answer them when I, when I talk to you then. Other than that, Carrie, I'm going to hand it over to you and change the presenter. Perfect. Thank you.
All right, let me make sure. Okay, I think we got it. There you go. I always love it when technology actually works correctly. Right? All right. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for having us on this morning. Um, yes, yeah, so I am actually the head of product development. I am an actuary, but I spend a lot of time on the marketing side as well, so don't worry, we won't be talking about mortality tables and things like that. But one of the joys of my job is I get to build the products and actually get to talk to, talk about them as well. So today we'll run through um, our product line here at Equitable. We'll touch just briefly on our MIGAs, just so you guys are all aware that we have them, because um, they have been some of the top sellers in the industry. And then we'll really focus on our Teton line after that. So with this, for those of you that are new and haven't worked with us before, I always like to just mention a little bit about who the heck we are at Equitable. Um, so we are fairly new to the annuity space, but we're actually a, an old insurance company. So Equitable has actually been around for over 80 years. We got started in 1935. We did enter the MIGA space in 2018 and then quickly followed up entering the index annuity space just about a year ago in 2019. Um, we are very focused on service. Some, a live person always answers the phone. We try to provide um, top, top of the line service as often as we can. Um, and one thing I always like to point out that I think is a key to our success is that we are solely focused on independent agents. And I think that that's a really big deal because it means every product that I work on developing, every document we put together, every procedure we put in place, it is all tailored to you all. We're not trying to come up with products that, um, you know, are, will work in multiple distribution channels, but they may end up, a lot of times when you do that, they may end up not being great in either we really are laser focused on independent agents. So hopefully that makes everything that we do of our procedures extremely relevant to you all. And it also hopefully will help you do business and help make business a little bit easier as well. Um, make sure I can get my slides to move here. So we are rated B plus by AM Best. I always like to point this out because I actually view this as really good news. So we got new ownership back in 2017. And typically when you have new ownership, AM Best does no upgrades for at least two years. Well, so that was in 2017. In 2018, so right away, AM Best rated us as a B with a stable outlook. And that was really because at that point, we hadn't done annuities. And we were saying we're switching our focus to asset accumulation, but AM Best needs to see you actually do that first. So um, within one year, they upgraded us to be with a positive outlook. And then last year we got the B plus with a stable outlook. And we are definitely being extremely financially responsible and on the path to, towards a B double plus. So I don't know exactly when that's going to happen, um, but we are certainly working towards that. I'm not exactly sure if it'll be as fast as we've gotten these last two upgrades, but again, that's, that's what we're working towards. Um, and with that, I'll just touch on our MIGAs here real quick. So our secure savings line has actually been some of the top products in the industry for about a year now, actually. Our five-year products are each rated number two and number three in the entire country for MIGAs for independent agents. And we also have a two-year product that is rated number five. So we have three of the top five products in the industry, according to Wink, here at Equitable. Um, when you put all of our MIGAs together, that puts us as number one for independent agent MIGA carrier. And then when you look at the broader market, because actually more than half of MIGAs are sold in banks and broker dealers. When you look at that broader market that includes the likes of New York Life, et cetera, we're actually still in the top 10 rated number six, which I think is tremendous. Um, so those are our ratings, rankings for the MIGA. Here's the actual product. So we actually have two lines. We have the secure savings line, and we have the Secure Savings Elite line. Each line has a two-year and a five-year version of the product. Um, the Secure Savings line can be written up to age 90. The Elite line can be written up to age 85. We'll talk about the differences in the product here in just a second. Um, the maximum premium on our MIGAs is $500,000. However, we do offer, um, we do approve policies larger than that all the time, and we have a large, a very simple large case approval form that helps with that as well. Here's more of the nitty gritty of the product. So here's the secure savings line. I think of this line as kind of our, of our Apple computer where um, everything is automatically built in. So first of all, all of our rates are compound interest rates. These aren't simple interest rates. The two year has a 1.9% guaranteed compound rate for two years. The five years, 285. 
automatically with Secure Savings, you get free withdrawals. You get RMDs starting right away, interest only starting right away, or 5% free starting in the second year. You also have full account value debt. Okay, very straightforward product. All the liquidity that we have is built in. So if your client has anything unexpected that happens in the future, that product is good to go for them. Then we have the sister line, and that's the elite line. And what we said here is we said, you know what? what these are short products, two and five year products, right? What if someone really doesn't need those free withdrawals? What if they are very healthy and they're not worried about full account value at death or they have their spouse as the beneficiary and the spouse plans on just stepping in anyways? If we remove some of those benefits, how high could we kind of supercharge that interest rate? And here you see on the elite line, look at that. We got that two-year rate up 40 basis points from 190 all the way up to 2.3%. And we got the five-year from 285 all the way up to 3.1% by pulling out those benefits. And the thinking here was if someone has access to other funds, right, let's not drag their interest rate down by providing them liquidity that they most likely would never use. So that's what we did here. However, if someone has qualified money and they're going to need to take out RMDs, guess what? You can just add RMDs to it and they have RMD coverage. If they want, you know, interest only, they can do a slight rate reduction for interest only and it leads to a much more efficient product as far as rate goes because you're not paying for all these benefits you may not use. One cool thing I'll mention about Elite though is if someone does add like an RMD and an interest only liquidity rider to it, they can actually take out two free withdrawals that year. If they add RMDs, interest only, and 5% free, they can take out three free withdrawals that year. So this product, you can really slice it and dice it and make it whatever your client really needs. And it, if you use it that way, it can actually become one of the most liquid products in the industry available on a, just a two-year and five-year chassis. So that's kind of an interesting thing about Elite and something a lot of people don't realize with how it's structured. And um, one last thing on Elite is we also have an elevation bonus for those Elite products, the two and the five year. This goes directly to you all. If you have two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars of premium get issued in a month, you get an extra twenty five basis points, five hundred to seven fifty, fifty, and seven fifty and above seventy five basis points. We know for MIGAs that can be very, very meaningful. We actually have people qualify for these elevation bonuses every single month. Um, so that's available. And last thing, here's where the products are approved. So the green states is where all four of those MIGAs are approved, and the blue states is where Secure Savings 2 or Secure Savings 5 only are approved. All right, moving on to Teton now. Gosh, you know, Teton's been around almost a year now, so I probably don't need to go through all these goals anymore, but but I will today. Um, so just to kind of help you all understand why we designed Teton the way we did, it was really that we wanted to kind of get back to the basics of indexed annuities. And as we were getting ready to build this product, we took a step back and tried to look at the industry and what was going on. And what we saw more and more of was that products were getting more and more and more complicated. In fact, there's some products I have on competition grids that I just say complicated, you know, when you get to how some of the benefit structures are. We wanted to take a step back from that and kind of go back to the original index annuity value proposition that, you know what, um, with an index annuity, you can hopefully get interest credits that are greater than the fixed account and your worst case is a zero. And in some ways, that story's kind of gone away because we've added all these fees to products, which a lot of times, you know, fees come with benefits and income riders and all sorts of things. But you do have those years when you get a zero and you have to talk about why an account value went backwards. So we wanted to get away from that and really try to just come out with a very clean product structure um, and really focus on industry leading accumulation. So not try to be something for everyone, but laser focus on accumulation and really anything that could um, bring caps participation rates down, we really looked at, do we really need that in the product? Because again, we wanted to get the best caps, best rates we possibly could. And we wanted to do it in a very consistent fashion. You know, we are B plus, we were B when we came out with this product. Um, we knew that, gosh, a recipe for disaster would be if we kind of came out with bonus first year rates and then we hurt renewals later. 
that's not what we're doing here. I'm going to talk about our renewal strategy here um, in a little bit. I want to do it in a very consistent fashion so that you all know when you sign up with Equitable that you are partnering with a very consistently competitive company. The competitive landscape may change, right? We want to make our our pledge to you all is that we will be maintaining our products um, in a very competitive fashion. So with that, here's what we have with Teton. We really have, we just kind of say Teton, but that's really two different product lines. We have the Kickbutt accumulation version that's Teton 7, 10, and 14. And then we have the sister version Teton bonus 7, 10, 14 as well. These lines are identical. Everything is exactly the same. Same commissions, same benefits. The only trade-off is if your client wants that premium bonus, their rates are a little bit lower to essentially pay for that premium bonus. But you're indifferent, we're indifferent which one your client picks. Um, and here's how they look. So the seven-year products can be written up to age 90, the 10-year products up to age 85, and the 14-year up to age 80. Um, we do allow additional premiums in the first year. Um, those additional premiums get full bonus, full commission. They just go in the fixed account at that point. Um, and then our maximum total premium on Teton is $1 million. Again, we do accept higher premiums on a regular basis, and we have a large case approval form to help with that. All right, so the star of the show is Teton is accumulation. When we first released Teton, it was just focused on the S&P 500. And then this January, we added the Barclays Atlas 5 index to it. We have a whole bunch of different crediting strategies. I'll talk to you about why we have them. Um, everything with us is one year and there are no fees associated with any of these crediting strategies. Again, we don't have any fees except just withdrawal charges, bonus recovery percentages um, on, on our products. So, I kind of wanted to take a minute and just mention why we added the Atlas Index. So like I said a year ago, we were really just focused on the S&P. Here's just a sampling of companies on the S&P. Um, these are very well-known companies, right? I mean, and you know how these companies are doing without even watching financial news. I don't know about you all, but every time I go by a Home Depot these days, I see that parking lot is is more packed than I've ever seen it before. Starbucks. Starbucks just reopened in our area this week. That was very exciting for everyone. I've seen those drive through lines, wrap, you know, winding all the way around every day that I've driven past there. So these are companies we know, companies your clients know um, and trust and use, and that's great. And we love the S&P because it's the benchmark of the U.S. economy, which is the world's largest economy. So all of that sounds really good, but when we really kind of dug into what does that mean, what we saw is that the U.S. economy is the world's largest, but it actually only represents 24% of the global gross domestic product. So essentially, just us being focused on the U.S. meant that our clients were kind of missing out on what's going on in 76% of the rest of the world. So, you know, here I'm talking about how we have this great accumulation story all the time, and here I'm realizing, oh my gosh, we're missing out on a big part of the world. We need to do something about that. And so with that, we decided to add this global index from Barclays called the Atlas V. And with that, we're absolutely still in the U.S. economy. It's the world's largest. We can't exclude it. But we're actually in some different parts of it. So we still have the S&P in Atlas, but we also have the NASDAQ 100 with the U.S. Tech, with the US technology in Atlas. We're also in Germany with the German stock index DAX. We're in the, the Eurozone with the Dow Euro stocks. We're in Japan with the Nikkei. And then my personal favorite that we got with the Atlas Index is the Emerging Markets EFT. And this actually gets us to the rest of the world. Um, you know, we're the number one economy here in the U.S., but number two is China. China's an emerging market. So we get access to the Chinese economy through this EFT. We also get India and South America and South Africa and a lot of companies that are doing very, very well, even though, you know, they're in a country that is so technically considered an emerging market. So we love that about it. Those six components are the six equity components of Atlas, and then it has five bond components. We have U.S. bonds, European bonds, as well as Japanese bonds. And another great differentiating factor here is these are five and 10-year bonds. We're not talking about like 30 days, one year, two years. These are five and 10-year bonds. So with all of that put together um, in the Atlas Index, your client's money is really always working for them. It's not like sitting on the sideline in a cash account or something. Um, so here's really what where we go with Atlas 
And instead of us only having 24% of the world economy, with all of this, we actually penetrate 90% of the market capitalization of the world with the Atlas Index. So we we love that as um, an addition to our accumulation story, but we still have you know the S&P just like we've always had. This is just really an add-on to that story. And now I'm going to show you guys, hopefully you can hear the sound on it, a little video that kind of walks us through a day in the life of Atlas as it travels throughout the world each day. Gosh, I just love that video. It always gets me fired up. But I'll tell you what, it is odd seeing all the streets so busy on the, on that video these days. Hopefully we get back to where it's safe and um, the streets can be busy like that once again. Um, all right, so that's kind of where Atlas goes in different parts of the world. But here's the strategies that we have. Um, and actually, this is for the month of May as well. I forgot to update that. So here's our Teton line. Again, this is the kick butt accumulation line. So you see our rates. I'm not going to walk through all of this, um, but here, you know, I will point out. So our caps have been very, very level even through all of the COVID turmoil. Um, however, with the volatility in the market, we've had to see our participation rates come down. Option prices on the S&P for uncapped strategies have become very, very expensive. They're starting to levelize a little bit, um, but you know, if we looked at this last February, we would have seen. Um, 40, 50, 60% participation rates here, they have come down. It's not because of really bond yields or anything for us. It is really because the cost of the annual point-to-point -point participation rate strategy skyrocketed. And um, instead of it costing like 6% to buy all of the S&P, it now costs like 11%. So we just can afford a lower participation rate than we could a few months ago. However, as things normalize, you know, you'll see these participation rates changing and hopefully we can bring them back up at some point here in a little, little bit. But I like to mention that as well as the monthly cap because I know we have a lot of strategies on here, but they're all for a reason. And it's because these strategies respond to economic changes in different ways. So while annual point to point participation rates have had to come down, monthly caps have actually stayed the same or even gone up a little bit because they react different to changes in volatility and you can actually afford a higher monthly cap when volatility goes up. So that's why we have all these strategies because they all operate differently and we wanna make sure that not just up front, but every single policy year for your client, that they have some really good strategies available to them and strategies that work well in that year's economic environment. So that's why we have all of these. Down here at the bottom, we have our two strategies tied to Atlas. 
I know these adjustments look, look great. Remember, these are one-year adjustments. So this is an Alice annual point-to-point -point participation rate. The participation rate is 100 to 125, depending on which one your client picks. And then we have a really great strategy down below called the Atlas. It is an annual point-to-point -point spread, but it's like the opposite of a spread. We're in a typical spread. If the Atlas index goes up 10, let's say, you have a 1% spread, your client gets 10 minus 1, which is 9. Here we have such large budgets on Teton that we have actually a boost to the client's credit. So on Teton 14, if the Atlas index goes up 10, your client enhances that by a buck 25 and they actually get a credit of 1125. So that's what's going on with that strategy. I think we're the only ones out there that have something like it. And um, we love, we love all of these strategies really. And again, all of them have their time. A thing that is nice about the Atlas index because it is a custom, you know, vol control index is it is not sensitive to changes in volatility like these S&P ones are. So you should see very, very level adjustments, renewal rates on the Atlas index because it doesn't have that volatility component that can change each year. Um, here's our Teton bonus rates. So the only thing that's different here is instead of, because we have this premium bonus, our rates are a little bit lower. So on the seven year, we have a 5% bonus, zero to 80, and then two and a half percent for the older issue ages, 81 to 90. On the 10 year, it's 7%, and on the 14 year, it's 10. And here are all the same strategies, just slightly different adjustments because of those premium bonuses. So at this point, I kind of like to take a step back and talk about really how we develop such a strong accumulation product here. And one of the key components that I alluded to earlier is that we really removed any drag from the product. And so um, like one of the things I haven't mentioned is a lifetime income benefit. We don't have that on Teton, and that's intentionally because even if we had like an uncompetitive lifetime income benefit, it would have put drag on those caps and participation rates, and they would have to be a little bit lower, even if it's a benefit that wasn't necessarily helping you a whole lot. Um, so anything that was kind of like that, we looked at really carefully, and we said, is it necessary? Can we remove it? What can we do to kind of preserve those caps? And then another thing that's really, really important is we do what is called level option budget pricing. So if we come back here and let's just say we look at Teton 14 and we have this 285 fixed rate, you can think of that as the option budget. This year we spend 285 and we can afford a 6% cap. Next year on the first renewal, we're gonna spend that same 285 and we're gonna see what it can buy us. It might buy us six again, it might buy us six and a quarter, because um, volatility maybe has come down a little bit, it might buy us 575 if volatility goes up a little bit. But it's going to be really, really consistent. And a big thing here is because that's because we're spending the same amount, not just the first policy year, the second, the third, but actually all the way to policy year 10, year 14. Um, the whole time that policy is with us, what we have in our pricing model is that same exact option budget. Another thing that's important is we spend that same budget on all of our strategies, whether we're talking about S&P or Atlas. So that's really, really important and that lets you know that your client is getting fair, consistent value no matter which strategy that they pick. The only difference in adjustment year by year is just what that budget can afford because of volatility and other, other um, changes in the economy. Um, we are extremely focused on getting efficient option pricing um, that's something that we work really, really hard on at Equitable. Again, just another way that we can make sure we get the most bang for our buck as far as adjustments goes. And again, all of this is set up so that we provide very consistent products, very consistent value to, the, to your clients every single year. Um, all right, so now real quick, let's, I thought it'd be good to just kind of look at the last 10 years of a few of these strategies and see how they look side by side. And this way we can kind of see how Atlas and S&P work a little bit different. So here we have the S&P annual cap, S&P monthly cap, Atlas participation rate, and Atlas boost. So here year one, we see the S&P cap got capped out at six. Monthly cap got a zero. That can happen, right? Monthly cap can get zeros even when the S&P is up. Um, however, it also has potential in some years to get bigger interest credits than what we get on some of the other strategies. Atlas, both would have been very, very similar to each other and had, you know, double digit interest credits for that first year. Year two is fascinating to me, and this is not just a blip. This is something we see consistently when we look at historicals of Atlas and S&P. 
Um, here's a year where the U.S. economy went backwards. Great news, your clients in an index annuity, they got a zero, that's fantastic. But if they had been an Atlas, Atlas can move every single day to be in the right place at the right time. Atlas knew to move away from the U.S. economy and go to other parts of the world that were growing that year. And Atlas, in a year when the U.S. economy went backwards, Atlas would have delivered double-digit interest credits. That right there is the power of Atlas, that it can take a year that otherwise would have been a zero and not just turn it into an interest credit of 1% or 2%, but in a very meaningful interest credit. That's where it gets its extra oomph from. Then we keep going. The next year, the U.S. economy comes back. Um, would have had good interest credits there in the S&P. Atlas would have still been double digits. Here, year four, monthly cap goes great. It goes crazy. Great interest credit there. Um, again, annual cap gets capped out. Atlas strategy is still double digits, though. Very, very consistent. Here we go back. Atlas wins. Here's a year when the whole world went backwards. But because Atlas can move in and out of bonds as well as equities and bonds in different parts of the world, Atlas just had a slight loss. And so here the Atlas participation rate would have had a zero. But look at that, that boost where we added a buck 25, it would have flipped that zero into a gain, slight gain, not a huge gain. But even still, it would set you up to meet with your client and say, hey, you know what? The whole world was backwards. We didn't even move to the fixed account but we still were able to generate a slightly positive interest credit for the year. Now we keep going. Here's a year where everything's pretty flat. Annual cap would have won. Monthly cap would have won this year. Here is one year out of 10 when every single strategy would have had a zero. And we come back and here we have another year where really every strategy does really well. Um, so when you look at the difference in the annualized interest credits, kind of the, the oomph you get in Atlas, it's these years where it's doing, uh, it's taking zeros and turning them into very, very meaningful interest credits for your client. And again, it's not some magical thing. It's really because Atlas is moving to different parts of the world at the right time. Um, all right. So kind of going back to the rest of the Teton product, liquidity for free withdrawals, RMDs are available right away, 5% free starting the second year. And we have a really cool feature. We have cumulative withdrawals available up to 30%. Here's what we did here. This is one of those drag items. At first, when we built the product, we had 10% free built in. What we saw, though, is our caps were ah, just a little bit lower than what we wanted. And so we went back and we looked at data. And what we saw is that, you know what? Few people actually use 10% free on a systematic basis. It's actually less than 5% of clients take out a 10% free every year. But what we do see clients do is they take out kind of a a bigger withdrawal at some point, or they take out a random 10% free, I shouldn't say random, it's really at a point when they have a specific need, but it's not every single year. So we said, as we said, okay, you know what, let's bring up, so we had a decision point, I guess is what I should say, is we said, okay, should we do 10% free for everyone? It brings everyone's caps down, and just a few people actually use that benefit. Or do we bring everyone's caps up, we put in 5% free, and then if people don't take it, they can actually build up a larger free withdrawal amount that they can take out when they need it. And that's what we see clients do. So that's where this all came from. So how it works is if someone doesn't take out their 5% free in year two, next year they can take out 10. If they don't take that out, the next year they can take out 15. So it's a really great benefit. And again, what we see is that it's really structured in a way that really follows what client, be, client behavior actually is. Um, all right, moving on. So annuitization, people can annuitize for their full account value after five years on the seven and 10 year products and after 10 years on the 14 year products. We also have some great riders, home health care riders, nursing home and terminal illness riders as well that are available. And again, all of these numbers that are tied to all of these liquidity benefits all include that premium bonus if Teton bonus is purchased. Um, wealth transfer full account value at death on all of our products. We have spousal continuation available. All right, here are our current state approvals. We have a few more that have come in that we are currently working through on our systems, but at this point we are in most states. So that's really, really exciting. The seven year are in 45 states. The 10 year products are in 45 states. 
and our 14-year product. Actually, Teton Bonus 14 is our top seller, and it is in 28 states. All right, so real quick, we'll run through a few case studies. We have a great illustration software tool that we built at Equitable. It's very, very easy to use, very quick to run. Let's run through that real quick. I'm gonna run Teton 14 just because I own one of those, so I always like to run it. $100,000, 60 year old. We're just gonna let the money ride, okay? We're not gonna take out any withdrawals. I put in 70% going in the monthly cap and 30% going into Atlas participation rate. Let's see how those numbers look. So here I'd like to point out, up in the top right, we show our annual effective rate. This is the engine. This is this product's engine of 7.3. This is, um, I always like to point it out because this is the real engine. Again, we don't have any fees on Teton, so there's no, no rider fees or anything that is dragging that engine down. The 7.3 is actually working for your client. Here's the 10 year, last 10 years of interest credits. Let's see how the money moves. So we start at 100,000. At the end of 10 years, it is more than doubled to 202. Don't let your mind play tricks on you. That is not a benefit base. That is account value has more than doubled in 10 years. And we keep going. After 20 years, it's more than quadrupled. We keep going, you get the idea. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's add RMDs to it. Everything else stays exactly the same. And here's the point here. When you actually have a great accumulation product like we have on Teton, what does that do? Well, if your account value is strong, what else is strong? RMDs, free withdrawals, death benefits. It makes everything strong. And so let's see how these RMDs look. Same engine. So at age 72, we start taking money out. We take out $8,229 for that first RMD. After that RMD, our account value is 209972 We take out our next RMD, 8501 Typically, we're now taking out RMDs. What do you think is going to happen to the account value? Does it typically go up or down when you start taking money out? Well, here we have a Teton engine. So we get a credit of 876 and our account value went from 209. We took out $8,500 and our account value went up to $219,000. And it's not just a fluke, it keeps happening. And at, the, at age 90, your client would have received, if this, you know, these historicals held true, $288,000 of income. Surely they must have run out of money by now. You guys were not even back into their premium. So they still have $262,000 left in their account value. So what I always like to say is, you know what? I'm sure you have an RMD solution out there that you love. That is fantastic. Um, just give us a try, though. Next time you're working on one of these cases, just run, run, run one of these policies and see how it looks for RMDs and just see if maybe it could be a good fit. Because, again, this is all just built into the product. There's no extra fees for it or anything like that. Um, all right, kind of last thing I wanted to walk through is I've been kind of mentioning this, that Atlas can be in the right place at the right time. And I really wanted to show you an actual example of how Atlas has moved to be in the right place at the right time during all of the turmoil of COVID. Um, so here, again, is all the different parts of the world that Atlas can go. And we're going to look at how Atlas moved each week during kind of the all of the super volatile time of COVID. Things have calmed down here just a little bit. But we're going to look at February and March and see what Atlas did. So this is looking at February 21st. And this is what I kind of think of as the calm before the storm, if you will. At this point, we knew that COVID was certainly impacting, um, was certainly impacting China and a lot of Asian countries. But a big question investors around the world were asking is, would the virus really stay in Asia? And if it did, could, was the U.S. economy independent enough that it could continue to grow even if, you know, a part of the world like Asia was going through a contraction? So that was what was going on right here. At this time, 3% of Atlas was allocated to China, 8% in Japan, 31% in Europe, and 57% in the U.S. And it was really a pretty even split between equities, or I shouldn't say even, but it was it was definitely diversified between equities and bonds at this point. At this point in time, year to date, the S&P was up 331. Atlas was actually up a little bit more at 342. Now let's move forward just one week. I'm not moving forward months. I'm moving forward one week. At this point, we're learning that COVID is going to expand beyond China's borders. There's the first deaths outside of Asia, and the U.S. is starting to prepare. 
So within one week, Atlas moves away from China and emerging markets. It moves away from Japan. It moves away from Europe and it moves to the U.S. and it starts to switch and it moves out of equities and into bonds. And it does it at the right time. At this point, the S&P turns negative for the year. It's down 8%. Atlas isn't up as much as it was the week before, but it is still positive at 92 basis points for the year. Now we move one more week in the future. Here we see the U.S. is starting to announce travel restrictions. I was traveling this week. Things were getting crazy. There's the first death here in the U.S. Europe's announcing restrictions. But there is a glimmer of hope and that we're starting to hear about Chinese plans to reopen their economy. So here, Atlas, again, is not in China at this point. It continues to move away from Japan, move away from Europe, and even more heavily into U.S. and U.S. bonds. Um, again, you guys hear what we really see. We absolutely have a global economy, but that does not mean that everything happens at the same time everywhere, and that is what Atlas is doing. So here, the U.S. still down 8%. Atlas, look at this. It moved up. It ended last week at 92. It's up to 21 this week. One more week in the future, okay? We have more stringent restrictions. We declare a national emergency. And again, Chinese factories are now starting to reopen. So Atlas actually moves back towards China. You can't see it here, but it's actually not a zero anymore. It's just not all the way up to 1% yet, but it is slightly back into China. We move back to Japan, back to Europe, and start to move away from the U.S. economy, actually. And guess what? Good timing. S&P is down 16%. Atlas does flip to be a negative, but it's a slight negative, and it's something that one of our boost strategies can overcome. Now we go to last Friday. Here we're in this kind of gradual reopening phase, and everyone's kind of trying to figure out, is this going to lead to a resurgence? What does it mean? But at this point, Atlas is heavily into the U.S. and really heavily into the U.S. bonds, as well as in NASDAQ, because the tech companies like Zoom have been doing pretty well during all of this. Um, they're providing the technology, you know, really people need to continue working and everything. I'm sorry if you hear my puppy in the background. We just got a puppy here and she's she's calling right now. Um, so at this point, as of last Friday, the S&P was still down for the year, down 9%. Atlas up for the year at 75 basis points. Now, what I think is even more interesting to add to this is how are we year over year? Okay, because we're not, we don't do interest credits after five months, right? We do interest credits after one year. So when we look at May 8, 2019 through May 8, 2020, we see the S&P is actually slightly up year over year at 159. Atlas, you guys, is up 678 year to year. So first of all, this is great that in all of this turmoil right now, what we're seeing is people, even if they're in the S&P, they should be getting positive interest credits. And if they could have been an Atlas, they would be getting, gosh, great interest credits. So here's what those would have looked like. So here's all the numbers we just went through. I'm just adding the Atlas strategies to it. So here, based on what Atlas was, you see Atlas participation rate would have been anywhere from zero to 428. And um, this is year to date. Okay. And we add the boost. Even through five, this is actually five, um, five one, the Atlas strategy would have been up 199. So I get a lot of questions these days. Gosh, which should I pick between the two, S&P or Atlas? Um, you're always going to get the answer from me that you don't, it's not an either or. You can pick both, and we believe that they work really well side by side, and they complement each other. Because at the end of the day, as I showed you in the last 10 years, I don't know which one's going to hit when, right? But if you allocate to both indexes, then you're really prepared to capture gains across the world at the right time. But here's the thing right now is because volatility is so high, like I mentioned before, it's really changed what participation rates we can offer. So what I put up here is let's just say you, you'd love, just like we all would, you'd love your client to get a 10% interest credit this year. Well, if you have a 15% participation rate, in order for your client to get a 10% credit, the S&P has to go up 67% for that to happen. That could happen. The S&P has been at lows. It's not today, but it had been. Um, so, you know, you just kind of have to think, gosh, do we think there's enough upside potential within a year that that could happen? Maybe, maybe not. 
Um, if you have a 20% participation rate to get a 10% credit, S&P has to go up 50%. And then you kind of see if you have a 40%, S&P needs to go up 25% to get a 10% credit. Here's what Atlas needs to do. Because that volatility is controlled and these adjustments have been able to stay consistent, um, the Atlas index, because the adjustments are so much higher on it, it just doesn't have to work as hard to get that 10% credit. So if you have an 85% par on Atlas, the Atlas index doesn't even have to go up 12% for your client to get a 10% credit. If you have 125% par, it needs to go up 8% to get a 10% credit. So I don't know which one's gonna happen, but what I do know is Atlas is a more stable index, which is which is fine, and it can still lead to these you know double-digit credits without having to work as hard as the S&P, for example. But the S&P can absolutely, we've seen it where it goes up 40, percent in a year it's even gone up you know 59 percent in a year so it absolutely can happen will it i have no i have no idea so i really like using both um because you know we do we are at a lower level of the s p than we <clears throat> excuse me than we have been um and so you can lock in some of those lows but then atlas also certainly has potential in it as well that's really all i have for you i guess the last thing i would just say is we have a lot of great documents that IMS can point you to to help it help just help your life be easier doing business with us. We have great pieces that are available for client, like how your annuity will grow document. It actually walks through the S&P index, the Atlas index, as well as all the strategies and how they work. So that can be a way you help explain how the strategies work to your client. We also have pre-approved ads where you just drop in your contact information. You don't even have to run it through our compliance if you if you use those ads. Like I said, we have large case approval forms. We have a great financial strengths piece that compares some of our financial numbers with other companies in the industry. Another thing I like to point out is if you like to ladder products on our MIGA app, you can actually buy Secure Savings 2.5 and Elite 2.5 on all the same application. Same thing with Teton. On the same Teton application, you can buy the seven year, 10 year, and 14 year. Just a lot of goodies out there, things we've tried to do to help it just be easier to do business with us. So that is all I've got, and I can turn control, if I can figure out how to do it, turn control back over. Got it. All right, I'm gonna launch a quick poll for anyone that wants um, additional information on what uh, Carrie has gone through today. And, and Carrie, thank you again for your time and all of you for your time for joining us. If you want more information, go ahead and uh, I just opened up the poll. We'll get that out to you. Give it a couple more minutes. Um, Carrie, I want to thank you again, and everybody else, thank you again for joining us. I don't have anything else, and out of uh, respect for everyone's time, I'll, we'll end this a few minutes early, and definitely reach out to your marketer here at IMS, myself, um, any any of us are happy to answer any questions on any of the, the goods that Carrie's gone over today, and um, you all have a great weekend. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.